Welcome to Deep World Updates. Subscribe and press the bell icon for more updates. August 12, 2025. Humanity receives a message. Not in words, but in light. The news didn't break like a thunderclap. It arrived as a whisper, a faint signal that traveled for 500 years to reach us. For decades, we stared into the cosmos, asking, are we alone? The universe remains silent, until today. The story begins not with a greeting, but with a graph, a simple line on a computer screen in a quiet control room. For the scientists who saw it, the moment was electric. Their hearts pounded as they checked and rechecked the data. It was the chemical fingerprint of a world both alien and hauntingly familiar, the signature of a living planet. The data streamed down from the James Webb Space Telescope, built to peer into exoplanet atmospheres and search for biosignatures. The implications ripple out from the scientific community to touch every one of us. The knowledge that life exists beyond Earth changes everything. Now, we stand at a new beginning, looking up at the night sky with a newfound sense of wonder and connection. To understand how we received this message, you need to know our messenger, the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST. More than a telescope, it's a cosmic time machine floating a million miles from Earth. Its golden mirror unfolds to capture the faintest, oldest light in the universe. Light travels at a finite speed, so when we look at distant objects, we see them as they were in the past. JWST can see galaxies as they formed after the Big Bang, and it lets us watch the cosmic story unfold. But JWST's other mission is just as profound, studying exoplanets, planets orbiting other stars. For most of history we could only guess if they existed. Now we know of thousands. JWST uses transit spectroscopy. When an exoplanet passes in front of its star, a fraction of starlight shines through its atmosphere. The telescope analyzes this light, breaking it into a spectrum, a cosmic barcode. Each molecule, water, carbon dioxide, methane, absorbs specific colors, revealing a planet's atmospheric makeup. JWST can taste the air of a planet hundreds of light years away, telling us if it has clouds, water, or signs of life. This is a monumental leap. We're not just counting planets, we're beginning to characterize them as real places. JWST is a testament to human ingenuity, built to search for the chemical whispers of life in the vast silence of space. For years, it delivered breathtaking images and data, each observation a piece of a larger puzzle. And in August 2025, it finally heard a signal that would change everything. The universe had whispered back. The data that changed everything arrived on August 10, 2025, from a world named Kepler-186f. Expectations were cautious, the signal would be faint, the atmosphere a sliver against the glare of its star. JWST watched as Kepler-186f transited its star, gathering filtered starlight photon by photon. The raw data was a stream of numbers meaningless to most but holding a universe of information. Scientists cleaned the signal, filtering out noise from the star and the telescope. It's like hearing a single, soft voice in a crowded stadium. After painstaking analysis, the final spectrum emerged, beautiful in its clarity. The first signatures were familiar. Water vapor, suggesting clouds, rain, and perhaps oceans. Carbon dioxide, a planetary thermostat, was also present. These findings alone made Kepler-186f fascinating. But then came the surprises strong signals for methane and most shockingly, molecular oxygen. Methane can be produced by geology or life, but oxygen, especially alongside methane, was supposed to be impossible. On Earth these gases don't coexist for long, they react and destroy each other. Their presence together was a chemical paradox, the spectrum was not just data, it was a revelation. To grasp the significance we must know the planet itself. Kepler 186f, discovered in 2014, was the first Earth-sized planet found in the habitable zone of another star. It orbits a red dwarf, Kepler-186, about 500 light-years away in Cygnus. The light we see left when Columbus sailed the Atlantic, Kepler-186f is Earth's cousin, 10% larger, likely rocky, with a year lasting just 130 days. Its close orbit puts it in the Goldilocks zone, where liquid water could exist. Life here would be different. Red dwarfs emit mostly red and infrared light, so daylight would be a perpetual twilight. Plants, if they exist, might be black or dark red to absorb the dim light. Red dwarfs can be volatile, but Kepler-186 is old and stable. The discovery of a substantial atmosphere suggests Kepler-186f has held onto its air for billions of years. Once a point of light, it now feels like a real place, with its own sky, weather, and perhaps life. The universe just got a little smaller. 
JWST revealed Kepler 186F's atmosphere, water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, and oxygen. Water vapor hints at a water cycle, clouds, rain, maybe oceans. Carbon dioxide keeps the planet warm, making it potentially habitable. Methane is fragile, easily broken down by starlight, something must be replenishing it. On Earth, that's life. Methanogenic microbes in wetlands and animal guts. Volcanoes can release methane but usually with sulfur dioxide, which JWST didn't detect. The bombshell was oxygen, highly reactive, it doesn't last long unless something is constantly producing it. On Earth, that's photosynthesis. Plants, algae, and bacteria transforming the atmosphere. Methane and oxygen shouldn't coexist, they react and destroy each other. Finding both in large quantities is chemically shocking. It suggests a planet in extreme chemical disequilibrium, something must be actively maintaining it. On Earth, only life does that. Kepler 186F's atmosphere is a planetary size signal. I am alive, the breath of an entire living world echoing across the void. For the first time, we see the signature of a complex biosphere beyond Earth. Why is this combination of methane and oxygen so powerful? Imagine a bathtub with the drain open. If it's full, the faucet must be running hard. A planet's atmosphere is like that. Methane and oxygen are constantly drained by chemistry and sunlight. To find both in abundance means two massive faucets, life, are running. On Earth, photosynthesis pumps out oxygen, while microbes produce methane. These processes are in a constant tug of war, creating a profound chemical imbalance. Without life, oxygen would vanish in a few million years, methane in a decade. The discovery on Kepler 186F is electrifying, two planetary scale faucets, two competing metabolisms. It's the signature of a robust biosphere, not just a few microbes. Astronomers dreamed of finding such a signal, the holy grail of biosignatures. Now it seems we have. Extraordinary claims demand extraordinary evidence. Could geology or chemistry explain both oxygen and methane in such quantities? Scientists considered volcanoes, but they release methane with sulfur dioxide. Absent on Kepler 186F, volcanoes also don't produce free oxygen. What about photochemistry? Ultraviolet light can split water, making oxygen, but not enough, and it doesn't make methane. Splitting carbon dioxide would leave carbon monoxide, which wasn't detected. Every non-biological scenario failed. The combination of what's there, oxygen and methane, and what's missing, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, makes biology the only explanation that fits. The planet's atmosphere is a puzzle, and life is the missing piece. When you add life, everything clicks into place. With signs of a biosphere on Kepler 186F, another question arises, is there intelligent life? SETI projects have listened for decades hoping for a deliberate signal, radio or laser from the stars. After the JWST discovery, every radio telescope pointed at Kepler 186 listening with hope. The result, silence. No artificial radio waves, no beacons, no flashes of light. The system appears quiet, but we're seeing Kepler 186F as it was 500 years ago. Maybe civilization hasn't arisen or it's gone or uses technology we can't detect. The silence may mean life is common but intelligence is rare or civilizations don't last. The great filter hypothesis looms, some step in life's development is hard to overcome. we found life but as far as we know, we're still the only ones talking. The search continues, but now we look for the planetary scale impact of life itself. The universe is not sterile, it is alive. Imagine standing on Kepler 186F, gravity a bit stronger, air rich with oxygen and the scent of methane. The sky glows orange or crimson, the sun a dim red orb. Even at noon the light is no brighter than an earthly sunset. If there are oceans they reflect the red sun, plants if they exist might be black or deep purple. The world is alien, yet strangely familiar, water, air, life. This is our first data point beyond Earth. For all history we were a sample size of one. Now we know, life is a cosmic phenomenon. The universe is a galactic petri dish, life takes root wherever conditions are right. We are not a cosmic accident but a cosmic expectation. The journey is just beginning. Kepler 186F is too far to visit, but we can study it from afar. Future telescopes will map its surface, search for oceans, and study its chemistry in detail. We will search for other living worlds, building a catalog of life in our galactic neighborhood. With this discovery, we know we are not alone.